good evening all so we almost come to the start time uh, uh, so uh, i am suresh dharmaratna current chairman of uh, engineering entrepreneurship forum so let me welcome you all to the one of the uh, main events uh, of our engineering entrepreneurship forum uh, so uh, this is about review the journey of one of the uh, renowned engineering entrepreneur in sri lanka so he will explain his journey and as well as uh, so how he overcome the challenges and also his vision or view for the current situation in sri lanka also will be uh, discussed in this session so this will be a very valuable session for all of the engineering entrepreneurs uh, so uh, today for the event uh, uh, one of the uh, renowned entrepreneur engineering entrepreneurs there so uh, if i say about uh, these some words about Hela Guru and Basha Pay here, and also recently Hela Pay. So you know who he is. Uh, I don't want to name him. Uh, oh yes, he is none other than uh, Engineer Danika Pereira. Uh, so now I am handing over the session by welcoming you all to uh, Engineer Saman uh, Kandanarachi. He is the um, Honorable Secretary of the Engineer Entrepreneurship Forum. So he will conduct the uh, session and uh, he will introduce the. Uh, our uh, panel uh, uh, in entrepreneur review the channel entrepreneur uh, as well as how this conducts it. So, engineer, Saman, uh, over to you. Thank you, engineer Suresh Dharadne. So, welcome all. So, in order, in order to start the proceedings, <clears throat> let me uh, glance through the, our today's event. So, our today's event is the moderator is uh, engineer Prasanna Lienage, and he will subsequently uh, introduce. Uh, our key resource person. So let me uh, come back to the profile of the engineer, uh, Prasanna Lienagi. He is a BC, uh, he's a BS engineer degree. He has got a BS engineering degree from University of Moratua. And with uh, 18 years experience as of now in information technology, consulting, training, development, media, advertising, and event management with overseas and local training. And he subsequently obtained, obtained a diploma from British Computer Society, as well as MBA from Cardiff Metropolitan University, UK, with a merit. Currently, he is reading uh, a Doctor of Business Administration from University of Calania, where his research interest is in innovation and technological entrepreneurship, open innovation, and sustainable development. And he also obtained the uh, certificate uh, certification from CIMA. CMA Australia, and currently uh, holding the position of director CEO of Tiflex Holdings Private Limited, which is the media advertising and digital marketing uh, company, and also training hub of Asia. So, also he's the immediate past president of Columbia Chamber of Commerce and founder director former uh, of Chamber of Commerce and Industry of Sri Lanka, and he also. Uh, visiting faculty member of many universities, including University of Colombo, University of Maratu, University of Kalani, and Open University, and Wyambe University, and ACBT. So, uh, over to you, Engineer Prasanna Linege, to start this uh, important session. Over to you, Engineer Prasanna Linege. Right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Engineer uh, Saman Kandanarachi. Uh, today, we have a very special guest with our show. Uh, I'm going to introduce him, but uh, even though I say I'm going to introduce him, I don't think I do, I do have to introduce him. So anybody knows, like when you say Helakuru, it's a very close brand to us. I mean, day-to-day -day brand. And it's today empowering 10 million plus Sri Lankans uh, with uh, a single writing digitally. And apart from that, Pay Here, Hela Pay, and, and many other brands. And he's an engineer. And his journey started in 2010. We, we will be getting to know uh, how he started journey and so on uh, in, in, uh, when, uh, when we are discussing, right? And uh, uh, let me uh, welcome Mr. Danica Pereira. He's a change-making serial entrepreneur. At the moment, Chief Executive Officer of Basha and the founder of Sri Lanka Software Products, Helakuru, Pay Here, Hela Pay, uh, and help it. He holds bachelor's degree from computer science and engineering from University of Morocco and a master's degree in business administration from University of Sri Jawadanpura. As an innovator, he won 
M Million South Asian Award in 2011, followed by multiple global and local recognition, including Iswabimani and BQSA uh, for his innovations. As an entrepreneur, he has been recognized as an emerging entrepreneur, the emerging ICT leader, and the most innovative ICT entrepreneur of the year by University of Mauritania, CSSL and Slashcom in 2019. He was recognized as the iron soul by the government of Sri Lanka for his change-making contribution towards the digital empowerment of the country in 2021. He was recognized as an outstanding young Sri Lankan role model for his inspiration and entrepreneurial journey. Danika Pereira, welcome to our show. And let me start like this, a very traditional uh, question, I must say. Uh, but uh, even though it's a traditional question, let's start like, uh, can you elaborate? Can you tell us how you have become an entrepreneur? What what is behind that and your little bit about your entrepreneurial journey for our audience. Uh, sure, Prasanna. So uh, first of all, uh, thank you so much for having me today. Uh, and I thank uh, IESL for inviting me. And uh, good evening to all of uh, the audience also. And uh, to answer your question, uh, to start this session, how actually I uh, become an entrepreneur? Uh, it's actually, uh, a very accidental thing. I never intended to become an entrepreneur. Or I, I never had an ambition in my childhood uh, to uh, become an entrepreneur. Uh, and even uh, someone won't believe that I even didn't know the meaning of the word entrepreneur. I didn't know. I mean, until I got into the university because I actually did the A-levels in uh, math stream. So commerce, uh, those subjects were not touched uh, by us. So uh, I never intended. So that accident or uh, that random uh, thing happened uh, due to one thing in my, uh, one thing I had uh, from my uh, school age, from my childhood. And that was actually, I had a unique passion. I had a unique passion. My ambition from the childhood was to become an engineer, software engineer. Uh, and uh, that was actually my ambition. That's why I uh, did my A-levels in math stream. Uh, while I was actually going to that dream of becoming a software engineer, I had a unique passion to make stuff in our own language, right? I mean, to, to uh, do technological stuff, to make technological stuff in our uh, own language, Sinhala language. And that was actually the unique passion that I had. So uh, when I look back uh, about my journey right now, uh, I mean, the, what I can see uh, that passion, that unique passion is the thing that led me to uh, become an entrepreneur and be uh, uh, successful in my entrepreneurial journey. <laughs> Good. Uh, yes, as you told, like uh, many accidental things happen to engineers, as I know, and also, what I believe is engineers are actually always geared to take uh, any type of uh, uh, challenges. So that's, that's, that's usual. Right. And Danica, uh, let me elaborate from there. Have you worked for a corporate uh, before coming in, uh, starting your own, or you just after the uh, university you started your own? Uh, it actually happened when I was actually, uh, I mean, the studying for my bachelor's degree. Uh, if I share, if you, if I share the story with you all, uh, what happened? I had this unique passion to make Sinhala, I mean, make, make software in Sinhala language, and uh, uh, I mean. Uh, even in my school age, uh, I had to do an A-level project and I, I uh, having no knowledge about programming languages, just by uh, doing some self-studies about some animation software, I happened to do a, a little piece of a encyclopedia kind of a software. It was called Manaware. Uh, I, I named it as Manaware and I, I, the, uh, when I look back, that was the first ever software product that I made in my school age. And then actually I, uh, I, I won Young Computer Scientist uh, 2007 Silver Award for that uh, uh, little thing in that age. And uh, what happened is when I come into the university, I, I studied at University of Moratua, CSE, uh, Computer Science and Engineering. So when I come into the university, I, I, I worked on the same passion. 
I worked on the same passion. I, and uh, when I had to do an individual project in the third year in the university, I still uh, decided uh, to, to make a software, make some stuff in Sinhala language. And at that time, you know, Android was very new to Sri Lanka, uh, not actually li not, not like uh, nowadays, uh, even uh, Android phones were very rare. At that time, actually the technology had come and uh, uh, I thought, okay, I, I envisioned that even though the smartphones are not much popular at that time, I envisioned that, okay, this will be the future. So when the smartphones become popular in another five years time, 10 years time, our people will definitely need, uh, will, will have a need to communicate in our own language, right? So that's actually the uh, idea that I got. And uh, for my university project, I developed a kind of a web browser kind of a software. Uh, where anyone can read Sinhala web pages. Now, I mean, everyone can read Sinhala on mobiles, but at that time, even Sinhala reading was not supported. So I actually uh, developed a web browser. It was called Set Browser. And uh, I, I did it for my university project, but I, at the same time, I applied for an international award, uh, M-Billion South Asian Award, which is which, which uh, held in India. And I won an award for that. And then what happened, uh, Etisalat was one of the another uh, competitors from Sri Lanka, uh, which uh, had applied for the same award. And they identified the potential of my product. And then they offered me a business opportunity. And that's, I, that's actually where I, uh, I decided, okay, uh, now I have a, my first product. And then now I have my first customer. Uh, so this is the uh, perfect time to start my own business. And that's why I, where I registered my company, Basha Lanka Private Limited, just as a third year undergraduate of University of Moradur. Right. Excellent uh, uh, news and excellent uh, story for any undergraduate as well. And also, uh, you told that uh, uh, you straight away from engineer to an entrepreneur. Yes. What do you see? Like, is there? A, have you felt any gap in between? Like, uh, like turning an engineer to entrepreneur? Uh, anything you need? You are lacking, or like you need to acquire something? And what kind of uh, issues you face by uh, by uh, straight away uh, starting a company? Yeah, good question. Uh, so uh, I see both uh, pros and cons. Uh, in terms of actually pros, uh, you know, I mean, the, when, 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 I, uh, uh, when I didn't have to work anywhere else and to start my own company and to start my own work environment by my own, I'm actually not uh, limited by these boxes. You know, I mean, if I had to work uh, somewhere, I, have, I, I get used to the, the, the culture and get used to the work, working procedures, processes, and all that actually the boxes uh, will, uh, will be uh, put it into the mind uh, if I ha ha happen to uh, work somewhere else. But being, uh, I mean, directly converted from an engineer to entrepreneur without having to uh, work anywhere and to start my own way of working, I had actually that open mindset and I had that, I mean, uh, unboxed uh, mindset to uh, create my own ways, right? In terms of how I actually uh, work, how I actually build a team, how I actually, uh, I mean, the, approach the customers, how I actually innovate, how I actually uh, 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 introduce products into the market. So all of them were totally new to me. So I had the freedom and I had actually this uh, open mindset to make my own base uh, on doing those stuff, right? So that was actually a very, very uh, important advantage that I got because we could actually make the very, uh, I mean, uh, several things in a totally new way, especially the working culture. You know, I mean, uh, if you are following, if the audience is following our uh, Bash, uh, company Facebook page or social media, yes. uh, you know, we have a very unique culture, right? That culture is not actually, uh, I mean, influenced by any of the uh, academic cultures, academic cultures, which, you know, I mean, in academics, uh, we, 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 we learn about Western cultures. So when I do MBA very recently, I got to know th those stuff. But when I uh, create this culture, I didn't know any of those, right? So now I know that there are cultures like Western cultures, Japanese cultures, likewise. Uh, so, uh, but not being actually uh, touched 
uh, or influenced by them uh, resulted me to create our own culture, which is very much inherited by the Sri Lankan culture, our country's culture, and uh, the, the values of that culture uh, inherited from our Sri Lankan culture. You know, uh, we, 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 as Sri Lankans, we, we are very much, uh, I mean, uh, like to work in a bond or in a love with each other. Likewise, uh, 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 there are some unique values in our, uh, in our uh, country's culture. So we actually got them into our company's culture and we, 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 we de developed a culture based on that. Right, so that is one example, and even actually when when we uh, how we actually do our marketing, do our uh, sales activities, uh, promotions, the, all of them are actually uh, not uh, boxed or not actually limited for what is in the what is in the, the theory, what is in the uh, book, right? So that was actually a very good advantage, some some of the advantages, and when when it comes to the uh, disadvantages side. Uh, you know some of the uh, i mean the uh, i mean business related matters you know i mean the how how were we actually uh, i mean the in terms of uh, growing a business uh, now in the startup stage it's all about the engineering skills are very much enough for the startup phase to uh, think in a new way and uh, to come up with solutions for problems uh, using technology uh, those are sufficient but when the startup uh, when you actually come from the startup level to a some sort of a grown up level then there's some point you need actually some uh, i mean uh, uh, some other knowledge uh, some more knowledge uh, in terms of uh, running a business uh, in that aspect so that was actually something that i lacked uh, when when i grow the business up to some level and to uh, address that i decided to do an mba or the uh, business administration side to gain the business administration knowledge uh, by doing a uh, different uh, kind so i have my bachelor's from engineering and i have my mba uh, from uh, business side <laughs> Great. And, and uh, Danica, I agree with you like as a person to actually follow your uh, social media uh, streams because one, one other notable uh, thing I, what I have seen is like a decision you have taken to uh, basically uh, based your head office in Kalutara, right? All the other companies are actually uh, in, in uh, coming to Colombo, like you, you decided, no, I'm going out of Colombo and I'm going to place there. That is also kind of a, a radical decision uh, I have seen. So can you a little bit comment on that why you did that? Exactly. I mean, that is another thing that I, I, I uh, which was a result of me being not actually influenced uh, with, with other other cultures or other uh, work, workplaces. You know, I mean, the, the I, I only had the six month internship period. I work at a software company only for my, because the university requires a six months internship period. So that was the only uh, other culture experience that I had. So they are also what I experienced. Okay, they're, they're, I mean, people are, I mean, the, uh, there is a myth or there is a misconception that if you are a business, if you want to start a business, uh, your, your head office should always be there in Colombo, right? So I, I purposely, uh, intentionally wanted to uh, uh, break that mindset barrier, right? Break that mindset barrier and set an example, uh, especially for the uh, youngsters, right? Especially for the youngsters who are not actually in the center of the country, Colombo, uh, outside and who want to build their own uh, companies, right? I, I want to set up an example this is doable, right? Some in some industries, I agree. Uh, there are some, there can be some barriers, but in terms of IT, in terms of uh, information technology, the 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 place is no longer matters, right? And I realized that because uh, I already shared with you that I started the company uh, while I was an undergraduate. So uh, in the third year, right? So the third year and the fourth year of the university. Uh, I had a registered company as Bajalanka Private Limited, but we didn't have any office, right? We didn't have any physical place, but we operated for two years, right? We, we made several products, we, we got uh, several awards. Uh, when I pass out from the university, right? We, I, I had a team of about three, four uh, who, are, who are my colleagues, 
we were we were working from home we were working from university we were working from boarding places like right so at uh, in that two years what i realized was running an it company the, no longer needs a place right and even uh, we all of us actually experienced that during the covid season oh, right <laughs> yes <laughs> so that is uh, there are some mi mindset barriers that uh, our people have you know i mean the, as a country so we we need to get out of these uh, mindset barriers if we are to progress so that's uh, some example that i wanted to set apart from this mindset barriers and cultural barriers and all these things, any significant barriers or problems you have faced during your uh, entrepreneurial career you can mention of course i mean the, that are countless uh, you know i mean the, an entrepreneur's journey is always uh, a, a mix of ups and downs right i mean the, uh, most of the time uh, people uh, the, the general public only see the uh, achievements or the ups of entrepreneur's life because actually we uh, we tell to the world or we express to the world only the ups only the positives but there are so many down uh, down times that we have to go through difficult times that we have to go through where we as entrepreneurs have to absorb and uh, however proceed because i mean if we uh, let it down if we actually get down all our team all our customers all our partners all our uh, i mean uh, uh, people who are stakeholders that we work with everyone actually get uh, i mean uh, let down right so that is some part that we have to absorb, but I'm really open to share uh, all of them uh, to inspire you all, right? I mean, if I start from the very beginning, you know, I mean, this, uh, uh, again, this cultural barrier was a very, uh, a very uh, significant barrier for us because, you know, uh, I didn't go for, I didn't have any experience, work experience uh, at anywhere else. So, to start a company and recruit people, uh, recruiting was a, a barrier in the early stage because uh, no one knows the company, right? Uh, so we ha had that kind of barriers and then actually about financial barriers, you know, I mean, uh, the one of the biggest barrier for a startup in Sri Lanka or any other country is actually to find the right business model, right? You may actually come up with an idea, a great idea, and you may come up with a solution, and you may come up with the, uh, I mean, the uh, user base uh, who attract, uh, who gets attracted to your product, but until you actually find a right business model to sustain, financially sustain, uh, you are you are you are not actually uh, successful, right? You can't actually uh, survive, right? So finding this right business model was also uh, a major barrier for us. Sorry, 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 sorry. I think someone's mic has okay. Okay, go ahead. Sorry, as a disruption. It's okay. <laughs> Those things happen. Okay, so uh, uh, that business model, for finding the business model, you know, I mean, uh, in the very, very uh, first stages, uh, uh, the, the product that all of you know, Helakuru, uh, e, that actually a, uh, a very good product, which actually attracted most of the people. Uh, everyone used it uh, because it, that, that solved a real world problem for them. But for us, from our end, uh, it was really hard to find the right business model to financially uh, sustain that. You know, uh, since it's a keyboard app, uh, we, did, we, we, need, we didn't have a chance to monetize it uh, through advertisements. You know, I mean, we can't pop ads uh, through, from a keyboard. And even then, uh, we tried some uh, uh, paid versions and even th that didn't work because, you know, I mean, the people in our country always uh, think uh, in their perception free. that software is free, right? Yes. So, <laughs> we we never happens. used to pay for uh, software. Exactly. So in such a perception, actually, it was very hard to find a way how we can actually uh, monetize, how we can actually make a living uh, through that kind of a product. So it took us about uh, three, four years to find a business model. And luckily, we could find something that very unique to our people. You know, I mean, uh, we tried with many features uh, to, to give many features as uh, paid features, right? Uh, 
uh, I remember when we come up with this uh, Sinhala word prediction support, you know, I mean, Rakurak the type karata pass a word suggest when so that feature uh, when uh, it was uh, it was uh, it was uh, developed for Sinhala language for the very first time by us, right? Uh, previously, it was there, it has been developed for English and other languages, but for Sinhala that was not uh, researched or not developed, right? Uh, and it was a complex thing uh, because, you know, I mean, if it is English language, it's only about uh, 26 characters, uh, right? But in Singular, there are so many characters. So uh, in a real time, uh, in a real time situation to predict uh, uh, words like that, it was actually, a, uh, technically it was a barrier at the first stage, right? And uh, it was doable, but it was time consuming. Uh, there was delays and all that stuff. So uh, our team actually, there in, in terms of engineering wise, our team actually put a great effort and uh, finally uh, made the ready-made uh, feature uh, for singular language with that. And since it was actually a very uh, attractive one, we thought that people would be interested to buy that, you know, to pay for that. Uh, but we were totally failed, right? No one was much interested on such a, such a thing. But later, uh, we introduced these keyboard themes. Keyboard themes in terms of engineering wise, it's, it's just a fan, fancy feature, right? It was nothing about uh, technology, right? But uh, and an experiment, as an experiment, we thought, okay, we will actually try a business model with this, Kela Pidala Belua, our people was so much attractive, so much actually attracted to that feature. I mean, instead of that, uh, the, the features that we put a lot of effort, right? However, actually, we could finally break that uh, uh, glass ceiling of the business model. And uh, people were so attractive about these uh, themes and all that fancy features. And we made a business model. So that was actually another uh, major barrier, which took us time. But right now it has been a cash cow to us. Uh, we we uh, invest uh, for all our other products, including Helape, uh, all that uh, from the revenue that we generated from that uh, uh, Helapuru themes. And also, you know, I mean, when we grow as a company, I mean, the, when we start another venture for payment side, uh, there were regulatory barriers, you know, I mean, the, those are some things that you're out of your control. Right. I mean, our, my intention, intention is always actually to solve a problem. Right. So when we actually uh, see this uh, uh, PayPal, the need of PayPal over a decade, still we are waiting. Uh, so many promises given from uh, so many people. broken promises. Exactly. But I mean, uh, so as an entrepreneur, but I thought, uh, I thought actually, why can't we give uh, try something out uh, of our own? Why can't we do something? So that was actually my motivation because as a business, when I run a business, uh, me, uh, myself also had that need, had that barrier. So I actually wanted to uh, break that barrier and uh, to, to uh, come up with a solution. So we work with actually few banks and few parties and we modeled the solution and we launched. And after we launched and uh, could, uh, after we gained about 200 uh, customers and after even we passed uh, processing about 5 million rupees of payment, uh, there comes a letter from the central bank stop your service, refrain from your business, <laughs> right? So that's, that's Sri Lanka. So, I mean, the, uh, I mean, the, that was actually a nightmare for, for me. Uh, I mean, uh, the very first uh, thing that we had to face to a do or die situation. Right. I mean, either we have to let it go. OK, uh, if we can't do this uh, under these uh, regulations and uh, laws, uh, OK, we will stop this or the do part. Uh, struggle about that. Uh, right. I mean, uh, we, we, uh, the, the problem there was our legal system didn't have provisions. Our legal system hasn't haven't been evolved to support a payment model like that. Right, we operated the actually in an aggregator kind of a model. So our payments and uh, settlement uh, uh, systems act didn't have a provision to that kind of a um, business model. Right, so we had to actually come uh, go there and uh, convince them uh, to show them the need of this thing, this kind of a thing, to the country. And finally, we could uh, get their support to 
come up with a new direction, it's kind of a making a new low, right? Without any influences, I don't have any kind of, uh, uh, I didn't have any kind of influence, but only by working with officials, we could actually convince the need of that. And uh, Central Bank came up with a new direction, uh, direction number one of 2018, giving the provision, legal provision to operate the aggregator kind of a model. Right, so that right. was uh, another story. <laughs> So there are uh, barriers like that. Right. And, uh, so recent... that does actually you, yeah. you this yeah yeah with with the barriers actually you explain uh, the business model as well how you work and and what is your business model portion. And I'll ask you small questions uh, before going to the, our next uh, topic. Uh, is there any role model uh, local or foreign you follow? <laughs> That's a difficult question. So I follow, I mean, the, the, uh, several role models, not actually one. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to mention them uh, from actually uh, in terms of uh, the, I mean, most people recognize me for the humbleness. Uh, that is actually my role model is my own father. Uh, he's not with, with me anymore. So uh, my father is my role model in, in terms of that. And in terms of actually my leadership, uh, my role model is uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm a Catholic. So uh, the servant leadership, that is actually the leadership style I follow, the participative and servant leadership. And then actually in terms of uh, communication, uh, how I communicate as an entrepreneur, how I communicate as a leader, how I communicate as, a, as an innovator, uh, my role model is uh, Steve Jobs. So those the three persons are uh the persons that i get influenced from right great and uh, Bansha, uh let's move into our broader picture now right you know where are we now uh, our country is facing uh, i think the worst uh, economic condition at the moment how do you think the it it sector ict sector in a broad perspective can help this uh, situation and also as an individual company how do you think your company can uh, help in this situation? Sure, uh, Prasanna, uh, I'll, I'll talk about uh, the, the second question first, how we, actually, uh, uh, how we actually saw this and how we actually react to this. Uh, you know, I mean, the, for any kind of uh, 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 an entrepreneur, you know, uh, any problem in the society uh, is actually an opportunity to uh, create, I mean, be creative and to come up with new ideas, you know. Uh, so uh, that is actually the real deep meaning of entrepreneurship as well, right? I mean, in, in our, in our uh, media and all that, this entrepreneur, the word of entrepreneurs is very much misused. Even uh, who started, uh, who actually do a shop, who actually run a small, uh, uh, I mean, the small business, they actually call entrepreneur, but that's actually not the real meaning of entrepreneurship. Uh, entrepreneurship really means, I mean, uh, coming up with uh, solutions, you know, I mean, that uh, solutions for real world problems by creative thinking, by creative ideas, right? In a profitable way, right? That part, the creative part is a must and the uh, uh, financially sustainable, the profitable part, part is a must. So uh, for an, any organization, especially uh, for an entrepreneurial organization, uh, we should have the capability to uh, analyze any situation, uh, any, any uh, situation and to react to them and to, and to respond to them with our products and services, our solutions, right? So in terms of us, uh, we actually position ourselves uh, as a as a uh, technology information technology product company in the country, who actually directly serves uh, uh, the customers through our products and services, technology products and services. We actually uh, innovate them, we actually develop them, design them, develop them, um, market them, and also handle the customer service part. So in that kind of a positioning, right? I mean, the, what is our role in terms of uh, the the situation that the country is right now? So that is uh, something that 
uh, th that we feel that we actually uh, that is not something that we actually uh, do in, in, in a theoretical way, but uh, from the gut feeling, uh, that is something that uh, we feel that we should do. So we have a set of products targeting different customers. You know, Helapuru for the mass audience, consumer base, and Pay here is serving the businesses, uh, B2B product, uh, serving the businesses and also shop here uh, kind of solutions. Uh, Likewise, there are several. So we thought what we can do for the people, what we can do for the country from these, uh, uh, from these products and their user base, from their communities that who use our products. And our very first initiative uh, as a response was actually uh, to build a crowd uh, platform to, to give a solution or to, to give a uh, relief I, I, I can't say that's a solution because the solutions has to be provided uh, from uh, some others, but as a relief for the people, as a support for the people, uh, our core strength, we analyzed our core strength is actually uh, making the people communicate with each other. So we actually build a crowdsource platform uh, for this uh, fuel uh, issue. Uh, the fuel crisis that we have to get informed about this uh, situation, uh, not actually relying to the uh, any of the sources, but uh, that people to people, right? So I, uh, there's some philosophical uh, line that I really like, uh, I really uh, follow in Singhala, so that's uh, there in my room in my glass uh, here right so that is something that we can we we have to uh, we think of in this kind of a solution uh, situation right because if we wait for some other for to to solve our problems nothing will be solved so we have uh, we have to work uh, each and every one of us have to work for this uh, what can we do? What can I do? That actually should be the motivation. So it should be the way uh, to handle the situation. So in our uh, in our aspect, uh, our core strength was actually the massive user base that we have with Telakuru. So we thought actually it will be practical to give a crowdsource solution uh, for people to people, from people to uh, people, uh, sharing the information, and it, that worked really well. And right now, actually, uh, it is available as a fuel search map in the city of Makila Singhala. So people are using that. And they were, uh, very recently, we also in, uh, introduced a social news feed for that. Uh, so people can actually share information based on the location, right? We see people actually share information even in social media, Facebook and all that. But uh, since it is actually a location-based thing, we, we gave them an opportunity to, uh, to, to, uh, to uh, share information based on the location, based on the first stations, or uh, in future, it will be in more locations like train stations, like uh, bus stations, like, likewise. So that is something that we actually did uh, as the very first step. And right now, uh, more than 200,000 are actively using that, uh, uh, actively actually involved in that, uh, sharing information with each other. And uh, that is something uh, that we did in the initial. And then actually we thought uh, from the business perspective, uh, you know, I mean, uh, getting the foreign income for getting the foreign exchange to the country is very crucial at that time. So we thought actually from our business solutions from pay here and uh, shop here, how we can support businesses uh, on that. And uh, there are several initiatives going on to support that, especially uh, from, through pay here, we enable local businesses to uh, get foreign payments, get dollar payments uh, from foreign customers. So uh, we, are, we are right now planning on actually uh, keep, uh, I mean, removing their limits of payment limits, how they can actually get uh, foreign remittance uh, through pay here and to get some, uh, to give some relief from the, for them in terms of fees and pricing uh, to motivate more uh, businesses to uh, do exports and gain uh, foreign income for the country. And in terms of actually uh, uh, shop here, we have another product uh, where we help businesses to make their own online shop or e-commerce store in, in just a five minutes thing online. So there also we are actually at, uh, uh, targeting another uh, version of that 
for the exporters, especially uh, targeting the exporters, where they can actually price their products uh, in dollars and where they can actually accept dollar payments directly through that. Uh, so that solution will help them to easily create an online shop uh, or e-commerce store in a uh, targeting foreign audience, targeting the overseas audience in a credible, uh, with a credible look and feel and with support of pricing products in dollars and uh, getting the payments in dollars. So those are actually some initiatives that we did in terms of our products, products, and also uh, we have to take care of our own team as well, right? Uh, because this is a uh, this is a difficult situation. It is a difficult moment for 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 all the all of us. So there are actually what we thought uh, transport has become a major major problem major barrier uh, for 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 all the uh, professionals uh, right at the moment so this next month onward actually we have uh, decided to give them office transport uh, we actually even purchased a vehicle for that and we are uh, giving all of them uh, the transport so that they they, they would have any uh, cost involved in for their transport uh, from next month onwards. So those are actually a few, a few things that we did as a company uh, to as a response for this uh, situation uh, we are in. And in your first question, as, as the industry, software industry, what we can do, I think uh, the most crucial part in terms of uh, what we can do from the industry, we have to identify what are our roles first. I think that is, uh, that is a major uh, issue that we are facing right now. Because, you know, I mean, the people involved in, in areas do not recognize what are their role. If they, if they identify what, what is their role, they can actually play that role and let the others to play uh, their own roles, right? If, if you get uh, for, the, for, the, for an example, uh, the Apex body for ICT in Sri Lanka, uh, the agency, I mean, uh, there's a very, uh, in my perspective of what I see, there's a there's a major lacking of them identify what is their role. I mean, they are, they should be an infrastructure provider. Uh, they should be an infrastructure provider who facilitates all other software companies, software solution providers, software professionals, all that to uh, come up with their own solutions, right? Uh, and being the backbone, being the infrastructure provider for the country. So I think first. Uh, they have to identify their role and play that role. If they play that role, all the software companies will be able to join hand with them, join hand with the authorities and contribute from their specialized areas. You know, I mean, uh, right? We have to understand that, right? We Not all of us are good at everything, right? So if they actually do, do their role uh, and uh, invite others to uh, contribute from their own special special specialties, and that should be the way to proceed as a nation, I think, uh, from the uh, digital aspect, from the IT aspect. Uh, very good explanation actually from uh, Danik, how uh, they are going to respond to the, this situation, uh, not only nationally and uh, internationally, also as a, a responsible corporate entity, entity, how they are going to take uh, care of their uh, employees and their stakeholders. So it's, it's a great insight, I think. And also before going to the next question, I should ask, uh, remind uh, our audience, if you have any questions, uh, after this session, we will be finishing in a few minutes. You can ask the question directly from Danica, or if you wanted to, for me to uh, read it, you can type it on the chat and send it to the chat, right? Okay, Danica, uh, so from that, uh, you you talk about business model and how you place and everything and aim. So before we are going to the q and session, I think if I don't ask this question, uh, it will be a kind of a, a, a vacuum, right? Or oh, I, I missed. So recently there was a, a huge uh, ha-ho and huge uh, controversy over the security and, and the data breaching. So can you explain what happened actually? What is the real uh, incident and how you respond and as an entrepreneur, how you bounce back in this situation? 
Of course, Rosanna. So, I mean, uh, as I mentioned uh, uh, earlier also, you know, I mean, entrepreneur's uh, journey is uh, full of ups and downs. So, especially in our uh, pay years journey, it was not a new thing for us because uh, we, as a private entity, uh, I mean, the, uh, ventured into this uh, area, the payments industry, uh, knowing that definitely there will be challenges and uh, we have to face that challenges you know i mean there were i mean were, even though this paypal barrier was there for the country for over a decade none of the private entities had tried i mean i mean the, uh, other than the banks right other than the fire uh, uh, all licensed acquire banks no one has actually uh, 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 taken steps or tried attempted to find a solution for this payments problem, right? So uh, we were the very first uh, uh, private entity, non-bank entity, uh, who actually provided the uh, payment solution like that. So with that, actually, uh, we, we had to face the first barrier with that uh, central bank issue. Uh, we had to uh, struggle for over one and a half years uh, to get the legal support in the first stage. And somehow we could uh, overcome that. And then actually uh, uh, in the growth stage of pay here, uh, we had to face a very unfortunate situation. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, I mean, that was something that we never expected. Uh, we had, we had, uh, we had uh, done everything to secure the financial transactions, right? The financial aspect of that, but uh, we didn't much uh, thought about the data security aspect. Uh, because, you know, I mean, the, we were much worried about giving the best use experience, be, be giving them the uh, best uh, user friendliness for the users, and then actually protect the financial aspect. I mean, to, uh, to, to, uh, to make no harm for the money or the funds or the financials of our merchants and customers. So that was our first priority, right? So having, uh, having our priorities as the, uh, like that, uh, we never thought that uh, someone externally would come and actually, uh, uh, I mean, perform uh, such an attack. So one thing actually, uh, it, uh, uh, it was actually, uh, there, were, there were some mistakes that we have done in terms of the data security aspects. So I had to admit that, I have to acknowledge that. Uh, but uh, as soon as the incident happened, uh, it was actually a uh, ransomware attack where an attacker actually uh, unauthorizedly uh, uh, accessed our systems, accessed our servers. Uh, we have actually cloud servers uh, hosted on Microsoft Azure. Somehow actually they have got unauthorized access, access and had actually transferred some of our data, right? But they haven't been able to done any of actually the financial transactions or any of the financial harm. Uh, even if, uh, so we always actually guaranteed that there, there is no financial risk at all uh, from this incident, right? And as soon as the incident happened, I publicly announced that, okay, we are under an attack. Uh, and then actually we continuously updated our merchants privately, you know, I mean, even though we didn't actually communicate it publicly after that, we privately uh, through newsletters and through uh, direct messages and calls, we, we privately uh, informed them uh, the ongoing situation. And the final uh, thing happened uh, after one month from the attack, the attacker exposed the data that he actually uh, transferred from us, right? And that is actually uh, the where the, the public panic or the people actually, uh, I mean, very much how uh, thing happened. Uh, the, the major conversion was why we couldn't actually uh, tell uh, what was actually uh, compromise what data has been compromised before the attacker exposed that and the practical reason for that is you know if it is actually physical uh, i mean if some thief come into your home and steal something right when you get up in the morning and when you look uh, at your home you can see what are the things that are missing what are the things that uh, the thief has uh, got thief has uh, stealed right but in terms of the digital theft, right? In terms of uh, a attack and a digital theft, when a, when a digital thief come into your system and get some data from that, uh, they don't actually delete those data from your uh, home, from your servers, 
but they actually get them copied, right? So it is very difficult or it, it is near impossible to uh, find out what, what are the data that they have been copied until actually they expose it uh, somewhere else, right? So that, that, what, that was our practical situation. We knew some, something has happened and we knew that uh, some data has been transferred, by, but until actually the attacker themselves exposed them, we didn't know actually uh, what data they have got. And that was actually the real situation. And as soon as we got that, as soon as they ex exposed that, and as soon as they uh, we we got to know that, then actually we informed all of the all of our merchants and all of the customers and all of the public. Uh, okay, these are the data that has been compromised, and these are the steps that you can take, and all that. And uh, that is actually the uh, what, what happened, the incident, and the best thing to get uh, the, the summary uh, from that. Uh, what you have to get. Uh, businesses can do uh, two things. Uh, some things are actually uh, because of the lack of integrity, right? Unethical things, you know, I mean, the, I mean, the Godak Devalapi, Dakalati, you know, Bancha, when they were fraudulent activities and all that stuff, right? That is, that is one thing, right? And then actually mistakes, right? There can be security mistakes, there can be actually uh, in terms of uh, financially mistakes, all that, right? So uh, uh, the, the best thing is we were actually from the very beginning from our journey from Basha to Halapuru to Pepe here to Halape, we, were, we, we ensured the integrity of our business and we never done uh, any harm or any actually, uh, uh, I mean, the fraudulent activity from our business from the very beginning. So uh, that was, the incident was actually a mistake in terms of actually the security aspect uh, of our systems. And we corrected that mistake as soon as it happened, but we could still, uh, uh, sustain uh, almost all our customer base. No one actually left us uh, except few one or two, which had actually some problems with us uh, in terms of uh, onboarding process. You know, our approval process is a little bit tight. So they, uh, a couple of merchants left us, but the majority, 99% of the merchants are still with us, uh, happily doing their uh, business uh, still with us, right? And that I think uh, because of the integrity, the, the value of integrity that you maintain uh, from the day one uh, to now, right? And uh, that is something any business should ensure. Mistakes can happen, uh, things can go wrong, uh, things can go very wrong, right? But you should have the integrity to acknowledge and to accept what has been happened and to uh, do uh, uh, actions or to act on that uh, to uh, correct those mistakes and to uh, ensure those never again happen. And that was actually the learning that yes. I got. It was a, Great. It was a very big learning. <laughs> yeah, uh, and, and and I know like there's a price for, uh, for learning as well, but uh, it's great to know that people still kept the uh, faith on you and trusted the uh, the your platform and being on the platform is it's just a very broad news. And also we must thank you being very humble on accepting the uh, mistakes. And also I have seen many uh, IT uh, leaders in the country also have come forward and and express that their support for you and as a uh, uh, industry uh, leader and as a, as a uh, young entrepreneur I think it's, it's a good sign uh, for, for our industry and also with that I think uh, we're gonna uh, find up our uh, discussion and let's open the floor for the uh, Q a from our audience right and uh, here I think I think uh, Dr. S.D. Devasurendra has raised uh, your hand. Uh, Dr. Devasurendra, you can ask your question. Yes, so yes. then after that, I'll go for other yes. questions. Yes. Yeah, this, is, uh, this is to uh, Mr. Danika Pereira. Now, uh, if you had uh, some kind of an access log maintained, would it have helped? I mean, if it was not some kind of an identity theft, you'd have certainly... Uh, noticed it now because you knew that uh, your things have been compromised then at that point if you had your access log then if it was not an identity theft uh, then uh, uh, what well, I mean such a simple thing could have helped sure. you in 
Yes, yeah. Dr. Devasurendra, uh, uh, the security attacks, you know, cyber attacks, uh, especially from the uh, foreign attackers, yeah. uh, they are not actually individuals. They have actually, a, they are a group of people who actually do them very strategically, right? So in uh, when they do set some kind of a ransomware, I mean, where, when they do that and may request a ransom, uh, to not to expose that and to to all that, right? They they are pre-planned everything, right? They are pre-planned everything so that they never they don't even actually leave uh, access log or any kind of thing that we can actually trace what has been happened, right? So we 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 had actually uh, a few logs, uh, I mean, uh, from our backups and all that, but those when you actually copy something from the server, you those data copied from the server are not actually logged in access, access logs. Access logs is actually record who has accessed uh, to your servers and what files has been accessed, right? We can, we can trace what files has been accessed, but we can't actually trace what files has been uh, downloaded or actually traced uh, from that. So that was the practical barrier that we had uh, in the situation. Yeah, access for access for modifying or something like that. That's what you mean to say, I think, right? Not to so modify, even to copy, to, uh, even to transfer. Yeah, even to download the to download, That's you have right. to go to the address. You have to find yes. the address where the data is there, and so on. Uh, isn't there some kind of a? I'm just trying to be very simplistic about it. Of course, I mean the, you can actually know this file has been accessed. So uh, very openly, our database has been accessed, right? But we didn't know what data from that database has been downloaded or transferred by the yeah, attacker. But, yeah, but uh, you wouldn't have noticed that it was an unauthorized person. Of course, I mean, we were able to uh, identify that and we make a public notice about the incident as soon as it happened. It actually happened uh, uh, first of April, right? First of April and uh, the data has been uh, exposed on uh, 1st of May, right? So 1st of April itself, we actually made a public notice uh, at, uh, informing all the stakeholders that we are under attack and we are investigating on that and this and that has been happened, right? But until May 1st, until they actually uh, exposed the data that they have transferred, uh, we could we didn't know actually what data exactly what data from our database has been yeah. uh, downloaded. So it, it was something that you could have avoided. Only thing is your emphasis was on the service and not uh, the security. That's what we wanted to say, right? That's right. And we have corrected okay, the thanks. mistake right okay, now. Okay, okay. Thank you, Doctor Deva Surendra. And and there's uh, another two questions. One is uh, how did you face the initial financing to the business. Can you share with us any advice you've received? That's one. I'll, I'll uh, connect other one also. There's another sure. one from Dhammik Anupama asking, dear Danika sir, can you please describe more about difficulties at the beginning when you were starting your company, deploying your own programs, examples, and how you found the facts, knowledge to build your software, dealing with your academics, financial cases when you were deploying, how the time reserved to make your program uh, impacted to your life and so forth. That means I, I think the how did you make the time balancing, time management and so on, and also the financial. Yeah. Sure. So uh, the first questions about actually funding, you know, I mean, the, the, from my personal experience, uh, we were a bootstrap from the very beginning. I mean, we did have actually uh, got any external funding uh, up to date. Uh, still, even uh, right now, it's about 11 years for us. Uh, up to date, we haven't taken any financial, uh, I mean, the external funding or even a bank loan, right? We were a bootstrap who uh, actually uh, invested our own profit generated from our products and services. We invested our own profit uh, for our own growth. So that's actually how we grow. And uh, that is that may be some uh, some random uh, case because uh, as I explained uh, my university time experience, I had my first product and first customer on hand when I start the company, right? First product was actually my university project and first customer was one who uh, saw, that, saw its potential because of that award that I won. 
and offered me a business opportunity uh, to to give that software to all their uh, subscriber base uh, it is a large subscriber base so because of those two things we were we we generated the revenue generated the profit from the day one and we uh, invested that own profit day by day uh, for our own growth so uh, that's uh, having said that, it's actually an example that being a bootstrap is not impossible, right? There are some other IT product companies also, uh, in addition to us in the country, who actually has been uh, bootstrapped. The one, one is actually uh, uh, high wage. Uh, it's a global uh, product uh, right now, uh, uh, started from Sri Lanka. High wage is also a, a, a completely bootstrap. So uh, if you have an idea, if you have a uh, new idea, if you, if you have a, a business model for that, uh, do not wait until you get funding to make it big, right? Just start from somewhere that you can. That is actually my advice for any, uh, any new entrepreneur. Just, just start. Execution is the most crucial thing, right? Otherwise, you know, I mean, our people come up with ideas, uh, this and that, and they actually overthink that. And they do not share with anyone to validate the ideas. They think that, okay, this is the million dollar idea. I should keep it as a secret and uh, I should do this. Uh, and they actually uh, pitch it and uh, trying to find millions of funding in the initial phase, but nothing works. And then the, their idea just uh, vanished, right? That is actually should not be the path. If you have an idea, start from somewhere, right? So start from very small thing that you can uh, make it make it work right if you make it work, if you actually start uh, from that point you will be able to, to to grow it step by step right step by step so do not wait until millions uh, funding comes to you just invest your own saving that is actually my uh, because you know i mean right now we are in a uh, we are in a, even a worse situation right so uh, funding will uh, be hard even difficult uh, in the time to come so best thing is invest some some of your own uh, funds and give it a try if it actually be if it actually perform uh, there will be a lot of people coming uh, to fund you right i mean when when we grow there were so many people interested in us uh, uh, asking us whether you need funding whether you need this and that okay we are interested in your stakes in your, the, all that right partnerships uh, and so on everything yes yeah of course <laughs> of course so uh, do not wait for that uh, start from somewhere and uh, the, the, right. the, and uh, then other one is actually asking about the knowledge i think uh, yeah uh, how facts uh, and the knowledge to build your software dealing with your academics financial cases i think it's a bit uh, not clear but i think it's about uh, how uh, you got the knowledge uh, backing from your academics and so on to make this software yeah uh, one thing actually, I mean, the, when you come up with an idea for a product or a, or a, or a solution, right? I mean, you, you don't have to limit uh, to what you know, I mean, to your knowledge or actually to, uh, I mean, what is in your box, right? I mean, if your, if your idea is actually capable enough uh, to solve a problem, solve a real world problem, right? You will, you will be able to find the relevant resources that will actually help you to build that, right? You don't have to have all that knowledge in yourself, right? That's why actually a startup uh, needs to build a team, right? It's a, when it comes to a team, uh, even though, I mean, when you do sort analysis of you, right, as a person, you may have some weaknesses, okay, uh, some knowledge you may not have, right, but then actually you can actually recruit or you can actually join uh, some other person who have uh, those strengths, your weaknesses as their strength, and then, sorry, and then actually when you actually build, a, build a, that kind of a team, right, all that weaknesses will not be there because all that are filled with the strength of uh, a group of people, right, and having said that, uh, from uh, in my initial stage, uh, uh, but definitely your your area, your passion should be there. If you if you don't actually have a passion on what you work on, uh, I, I I don't believe nothing will uh, anything will work, right? So if you are passionate enough, you will actually always find a way to gain the knowledge, to gain the resources, to gain the uh, uh, funds. 
to gain the, uh, uh, I mean, the legal support, financial support, all that, right? So the passion is a must, right? Uh, so think about ideas that are in your passionate area. So if you are actually, a, uh, if you now, it may be crazy to someone else, right? So the magia idea, right? Uh, 10 years back, if I said, okay, I don't go for a job after my graduation from University of Moratua, and I will actually start a company to make Singhala software, right? Their software in Singhala uh, to make a living. People uh, may laugh at me, right? People may laugh at me. Okay, wow, who can who can actually uh, make a living or make a, build a company just by making Singhala software, right? Or Singhala is only spoken by maybe this much of people. So how you do that? Uh, that that is actually okay, right? That is actually okay, because only you I did uh, you have that passion in you, right? It it is it is better if that passion is unique to you, right? So my passion was unique to me. For the very first question asked by Prasanna, who uh, what actually made me an entrepreneur? I said that it was the passion, right? So. It, First thing is identify what is your passion and uh, come up with an idea on that passion and then you will actually uh, be able to gain all the other things, uh, the, the other blocks of the puzzle uh, when you start from somewhere. So uh, get an idea like that and start from somewhere, start small, start, go step by step, you will be able to do that. Right, excellent. And uh, before coming to the uh, next uh, question, uh, there's an announcement to be done actually. Uh, we have launched actually our uh, uh, Facebook page for uh, Engineering Entrepreneurs Facebook page. Now we just shared on uh, our chat. So please go there and uh, put a like and your comment and opinions and be with our Facebook page because more activities to be coming on this page and be active and let's make uh, this journey very uh, fashionable and, and uh, a pleasant journey for all the entrepreneurs who wanted to become uh, entrepreneurs like engineers who wanted to become entrepreneurs. Uh, our forum is there to help you in, in many ways, like even like we can get the people like Danica to connect with uh, you all and get advices and uh, mentoring and our workshops are coming, this kind of uh, different uh, talk shows are coming, so please uh, leave with us. And also there's another question, uh, Danica, from Chapa Rafai uh, asking, does Helape allow international payments too? And can you explain more about Helape? Sure. Uh, so uh, th th this is also a, a question for some. I mean, uh, when I have a payment related brand as Pay here, why can why why did I actually come up with another payment related brand as Helape, right? So let me explain that and clarify that. What is what what is the role of these two things? I already mentioned that it's very important to uh, realize or identify what are the roles, right? I mean, the, that's some big mess that the country has made from top to bottom, right? Okay, so pay here. I started pay here. Pay here actually a payment gateway facility provided for merchants to accept the payments, right? To receive a payment from a customer, right? So uh, being a payment gateway for merchants, we, 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 serve, we provide the solution for the merchants, right? So merchant actually use our solution to accept payments from their customer. So we have enabled pay here to accept payments from multiple channels. They can, uh, merchants, uh, the, the, the customers of merchants can pay through even cards, credit cards, debit cards, Visa, Master, MX, uh, or Easy Cash, M Cash, iPay, Genie, Freemi. Likewise, they can they can make a payment for the merchant in any of those. So we are the facilitator uh, serving the merchant to receive the payment from their customer. That is actually the role of Pay here as a payment gateway. And uh, while we were offering this, uh, one thing that we always try to do to uh, is actually to reduce the cost of this payment because for merchant. You know, I mean, uh, uh, in, in average, uh, about 3% of the transaction has to be uh, bared by the merchant as a transaction fee, right? So this 3%, it's very difficult to reduce this 3% because there are so many parties involved in uh, processing uh, online payment, right? There are issuing banks, acquiring banks, uh, 
payment networks, payment processors. Likewise, I mean, there are so many parties. So this 3% is actually distributed for all of them, right? So that we, I, we, we, we realize the only way that we can reduce the cost of an online payment for the merchants is actually by providing, is actually by, I mean, eliminating the number of parties involved in processing a payment, right? This is something actually an engineering stuff. So I'd love to uh, explain it. So because you all of you understand this, right? So uh, what we did actually now, when, when it comes to a card payment, there are actually, in addition to the local parties, the local banks, suppose that customer is from HNB, the car merchant is from uh, Sampath Bank, uh, a portion is go, the portion from 3% is go to Sampath, another portion to the uh, BOC, and then another person for Visa, which is an international party, which is a foreign exchange or, or, uh, uh, our outflow, right? And there are some processors involved there. There are so many parties. So what actually we wanted to do with Helape to introduce a payment method, which is similar to Visa and MasterCard, something similar to that. So, right, to introduce a payment method for the local uh, community or the, the Sri Lankans, such that there will no, uh, there is no uh, international intermediaries are involved in between processing this payment, right? So in terms of Helape, how, how we process a payment, Helape is directly connected to the national payment network, which is Lanka Pay, right? Lanka Pay is actually a, uh, 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 a, a national payment uh, network operated by under central bank, right? Uh, by uh, Lanka Clear. Lanka Clear is actually the uh, technology uh, company, uh, but it's under central bank, right? So Helape is directly connected to uh, Lanka Pay National Payment Network. Lanka Pay is actually connecting all the banks in the country. They have the network uh, connecting BOC, Sampath, all of that, right? So they have the capability to, to do any transaction within the country. So Helape is actually a local payment method without any foreign parties involved we can actually process an online payment within the country uh, with the participation of all the local parties, local banks and uh, Lanka Pay and us, right? All the local parties. So uh, by doing that, we could actually call, uh, lower down the transaction or reduce the transaction cost of a merchant from 3% to 1.99% uh, for online payments and 0.99% for physical payments, right? So that is actually the role of Helape. Helape is a payment method, which is similar to Visa and MasterCard likewise. Uh, pay here is actually a payment gate pay, which is for merchants. Helape is for consumers. That's why actually we made it available through Helakuru app, right? Because we already have a huge user base on Helakuru. Uh, more than 4 million active users so that Helape can be used by all that 4 millions just at once. Uh, Do you have any ideas? Yeah. Do you have any idea to take this into the region or some international? This payment? Not actually, because the, present, the thing is actually now uh, the concept itself is uh, routing payments within the country. So we are, uh, we are, we are connected with Lanka Pay for that and Lanka Pay has the capability to only route transactions within the country. Within so the country. A local payment method. So basically eliminating the foreign uh, intermediary partners and, and also make exactly. that, uh, yeah. Okay. Exactly. Right. And also to make the payment uh, process smoother, right? I mean, you know, I mean, uh, we followed the WeChat and uh, Alipay kind of payment solutions in China. Uh, just by a, a scan of a QR code or a deep link, uh, the payment process is uh, just as simple as a fingerprint. Uh, comparatively, you know, in a card payment, you have to enter so many numbers and then OTPs and all that. Uh, here, it's just one tap, uh, uh, just after pressing the, giving your fingerprint or the face ID, the payment is processed. That Those are the two major uh, differentiators. Right. Okay. Uh... I think engineer Saman uh, has raised his hand. Do you want to ask anything, Saman? Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, engineer Prasanna. So my question uh, is about actually uh, engineer Danika. Recently, so uh, post in LinkedIn uh -huh. that uh, this about actually uh, certain products, uh, for example, like uh, you pay here. All these things, maybe that if that person who posted not aware. He said that why we can't have local products uh, instead of this uh, uh, PayPal, all these things. 
and also his his question was like uh, ERP enterprise was paying the products uh, like Oracle or Sapphire those things the Sri Lankans use but we are paying a lot of uh, foreign uh, outflows going on so why and I think it's seen this Sri Lankan product I think but maybe so likewise why Sri Lankan enterprise products ERP likewise not going to the market and why there is still opportunity available so in your opinion why we can we cannot have good product like why is that similar to that kind and also do you have any idea opinion to your company to have such product in enterprise market like erp which good question uh, engineer saman so uh, i actually uh, uh, i'll actually uh, give the, this kind of a, a brief uh, to that you know i mean the, right now we have a major problem in the country we don't have dollars right we don't have foreign exchange and when we actually finding solution for this problem the i see uh, there are two paths that we can actually go uh, to address this problem one thing is definitely we have to uh, we have to increase our exports so that actually we can get more dollars for the country. And the other thing, which is actually very less uh, highlighted from all the parties, right? The, the, the second one is actually we can actually use two local alternatives, right? We can actually use local alternatives where the foreign exchange outflows happen already, right? Uh, one, one path is actually to get the dollars, one turn is to stop dollars going out, right? And uh, from, uh, from, uh, from many products, uh, which that has been proven that uh, there are solutions to replace those existing ones, where people, uh, where businesses, especially businesses pay uh, many dollars uh, out of the country, right? So uh, for your question, why we can't, uh, come up with such solutions, I, I actually think that is a perception barrier, right? That's a perception barrier because there are solutions. There are solutions actually, which has gone to the international level. There, were, there are, there are, there are uh, software product companies uh, in the country who have done products which, which are already being used by the foreign, foreign businesses or foreign customers, right? But still, the local customers, the local uh, businesses or the customers are still reluctant to identify or recognize their potential. And they are actually the, uh, I mean, the, they are, they are, they are uh, level or the quality uh, because of some of the perception barriers that we have, that we have, right? I mean, that's so unfortunate. I mean, even we felt that when we start pay here, right? I mean, I'm, I'm sharing my personal experience now, Everyone was looking for PayPal, right? I mean, it's, it's it's something like a Superman coming into the country and solving all the payment problems, right? The, everyone waited for that Superman of PayPal, right? No one actually uh, expected, okay, we can do something, I mean, on our own. Everyone wanted that Superman to come and solve that, but that didn't uh, never happen, right? And uh, when we actually introduced Pay here, uh, only the small small businesses, uh, startups and SMEs kind of small businesses actually come on board with us in the first uh, two, three years, right? Two, three years, only we had uh, that kind of customers, right? Uh, it took us about about uh, four years or three, 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 four years for the corporates to start using our product. Right now, actually, there are so many corporates, including SLT, AIA, Fair First, uh, Jana Shakti, uh, even One Golf is Mall is one of our customers right now. Now there are actually so many big heads using our product, right? But in our early stage, uh, none of them were actually able to recognize, okay, this local product can also solve this problem, right? I think the major problem is in our perception, even, even, you know, I mean, even if you openly talk about the government tenders, you know, I mean, most of them are actually going to uh, other countries, right? India, yeah, there are so many Indian solutions, uh, very, very cheap prices. Some of the private companies uh, fell for the price, right? They, they actually, uh, pri very price sensitive people felt for that. And then actually the, uh, you know, the government authorities fell for others, uh, the high price because of the uh, everyone, uh, what everyone knows, right? Unfortunate. Uh, 
we have resources we have capacity we have capability uh, not i mean we have shown it uh, from helakuru from pay here we can build our own uh, this kind of uh, i mean hel even helakuru right uh, or everyone talks about super apps super apps the multi purpose apps in china wechat alipay uh, the, the india paytm everyone talks about that right but no one still believes that okay sri lanka can also have a super app we don't actually much market it as a superhead because of this perception but we are already doing that right just after the this world crisis uh, within two weeks actually we could give a viable solution the crowdsource solution for that right so i mean the most of the thing that a country has is actually due to this attitude uh, and the perception barriers otherwise we have uh, we have the capacity So it came to a very good point. Actually, everything is actually attitude, as you told. We also know because of this attitude, we have lost so many things, and also we need to. It's high time, I think, with this situation, or at least the people, not only the politicians, whoever, the people, administrators, all these people will will learn a lesson. This is a good time to learn a lesson. Open our eyes, okay. and let me thank Danika. Uh, Pending. Uh, is there any any questions? Any more questions you want to ask? Uh, I can give you a couple of minutes because it's six uh, forty nine. We need to wind up as well. Ah, uh, Danika, I'm Ravi Rupa Singh, uh, yes. one yes. of the engineer here yeah, and in the representing OPA. Danika, you you are the really entrepreneur. I think uh, looking at the country situation, my question is. Right now in Sri Lanka, there are few uh, entrepreneurs uh, that means coming to the market. Even in the university case, also same. So, is there any major barrier, or rather any restriction in the, our education system or some other institutions? So, looking at the developed countries, they have a many many path. Even the education system is so different compared to our one. Not only that. even another another aspect even some other institutions so they are they are they are trying to uh, that means uh, more 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 uh, people to do the business start the business so what you looking at that what are the factors affecting for the education systems and how we can give the solution to develop or to build up the entrepreneurs in sri lanka very good question uh, i think uh, the primarily uh, barrier or the challenge uh, that we have um, if i if i talk about this from the top to bottom you know i mean uh, uh, what we lack as uh, the country is actually always value addition so value creations right that's why our economy never grows we are always depend on our foreign workers and the tourists to uh, 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 the create i mean uh, run our economy but we don't actually much create value inside the country right and that is actually because you know i mean the, in terms of uh, the production you know to to uh, add a value there should be production in the country so the, in terms of production Uh, we learn in theory that the four four uh, four piece of production for four factors of productions right land labor capital entrepreneurship right we have land in our country enough land we have land means not actually the uh, physical land or, or, or all the all the resources right land and we have enough labor skilled labor with all the uh, you know i mean uh, all the capacities we have enough labor Uh, and then actually we have also we have enough capital otherwise actually all our banks should not be uh, so much profitable in every year right you know i mean the banks are so much profitable in every year they actually set uh, high records right uh, that means i mean capital is there but that capital is not utilized correctly right so capital is also there land labor capital all all three of them are there and the fourth one entrepreneurship that is the thing that should be there to manage all these three things and to create value right that is the lacking thing in our country right if no entrepreneurship is not there ara thunama tibbat wedak na right this the uh, these all these three things can be utilized uh, to create value on only if the entrepreneurship is there only if the people are there to manage these things and to create value 
right? But uh, look at the stats. We we have more, less than three percent entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs in, ter in terms of these simple terms, business people and all that, right? We have less than three percent in the population. But in Western countries, all the other countries, the the percentage is very high, right? So there are enough people to manage these three things: land, labor, capital, and create value for the economy, right? That's the primary problem, as I see. And why why is that? Because the, the, the root cause, I think, is actually the education system. Because in my school age, I even didn't know the word of entrepreneurship. I even didn't know the meaning of entrepreneurship. Right? 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 Because the, the reason is in our school education, in our in our education system, the, the students or the, the kids are actually trained to some uh, some only for some uh, speciality, right? Only for some speciality. Right? And likewise, actually, we are we are framed, we are boxed to uh, uh, someone, something, right? And if if the students fail to get success in that thing. Their whole life get failed, right? That's the main major 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 case uh, that we see, right? That we witness, right? That the education should be there to put, give the overall idea, give the overall knowledge, right? Knowledge uh, about everything for for the for the uh, students and let them decide what is actually the path that they want to go for their journey. Now in our school age. Uh, just remember if any any one of your teachers actually have their uh, motivated you okay do your education and uh, start your own business no one right always we are trained okay do your education and get a job do your education and go for higher studies and get a job those are the only two parts right those are the only two parts we have to get rid of this and we have to actually uh, train our students or the, give the uh, re, uh, adjust the education system for open-minded uh, people, right? Only if we do that, actually, they will find their own paths, own paths uh, uh, to to become success, right? To to go their journey, to go their journey, right? So I think uh, it's very much important that you raise this question. Uh, I mean, uh, other than uh, solving this from that level. Uh, there won't be more entrepreneurs and also these mindsets that we have the traditional uh, mindset that right? you can't be a never you can never be an entrepreneur if you right because you know i mean always uh, an entrepreneur's journey is a panel right right the best example if you have two minutes uh, right i mean yes. really love to share this now this fuel uh, fuel search uh, the crowdsource solution that we uh, uh, that we introduce as as a crisis response right uh, initially we used google maps for that and just after two days we got a huge bill from google twenty four thousand dollars right lanka we rupiah billing million attack with right uh, we don't earn anything out of that it's a community service only our brand value is built uh, but we don't earn a direct revenue right. The, everyone, uh, I mean, our, our team was very confused. And I mean, um, we are, I always said, no, we will find somehow to find a way. People need this uh, solution at this moment. We have to continue this somehow, right? And we, we, we look for alternatives, we look for alternatives, and then actually we, uh, within another couple of days, we move completely from Google Maps to uh, OpenStreetMaps. And then we had uh, another problem. Okay, open street maps only. Then the location data take with the right for for map tiles, which are actually the images that you see. We have to use a commercial or a, uh, another map server, right? That has another cost, right? demand user base That demand again actually come to a, a, a big bill, right? And then actually uh, we tried that one, and then actually we we we, we learned that okay, this is even not going to work. And then actually we found a self-hosted map service, and we purchased that. That that costed us thousand five hundred dollars, but it's a one-time cost, not a one-time cost, a yearly cost, right? Yeah, let's hope that this won't continue more than a year, right? <laughs> At least for this year, we purchased that. And we self-hosted the map server. And right now, actually, we we, we actually serving the map uh, through our own servers, right? And that $24,000 bill, I always had the belief, okay, we are doing this with a 
neat intention, right? Chetanava uh, Yahapatnang, Apita Varadin, Kinakama, always actually uh, what I uh, told my team. And actually, uh, we, 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 we explained the situation to Google. Google Map support team was very flexible on that. And we, uh, we, we clarified the, what happened. And we, we uh, requested the adjustment. And you won't believe, after about uh, three weeks, they actually made a bill adjustment, uh, giving, a, uh, giving a discount uh, for $23,000. Uh, 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 so up, uh, for whole, whole Google map usage, it only costed up $300, right? Right. A million attack with the a risk at the end, the continue Karapunisa, we could actually uh, still provide a use, use, useful service for the people, add a value for people's life in the difficult situation, right? But if we actually, okay, are 24,000 bill, nothing will happen. Right. So that's actually the mindset an entrepreneur should uh, have, right? Uh, that can that can't be done. Right. So this mindset should be changed. The education should be changed, and the people should uh, have a open attitude, right? People should have an open attitude to follow their passions and choose their own paths. And that I, I believe that should be the way. Right. But I think there's no any other way for us now either to jump or either <laughs> to be like this. So therefore, uh, thank you very much, Danika. It's a very insightful uh, session about your views, about your company, about your social contribution. That's very great, uh, grateful. We are very grateful even for this uh, recent app and so on. And uh, having you on our this uh, discussion is a uh, very uh, great and I'm very privileged to talk to you and I think it's for all the engineers and also we will avail this uh, for whoever wanted to see and get learn something out from you and be uh, to become an entrepreneur start something of your own not only that uh, the best message I got from you uh, for all of you is like okay you told that you are following that Minisage uh, Param come. Minnesota Save Kirimai. So please uh, accept our uh, gratitude and everything for you, Danica. Thank you very much. And uh, again, thanking you. I'm handing over to Suresh to continue this. Thanks. Thank you very much, Prasad. Yes. So I think today we have a very, very worthful, valuable session. And uh, it's also encouraging how, how you face difficulties and how you are going, going to face it and uh, what you share with our entrepreneurs, our budding entrepreneurs. It's very valuable as engineer, uh, how you, even you, uh, you from the start, you how you focus on uh, your passion and then you find a path to engineering, not like uh, entrepreneurship, not like other things. So keeping the passion and keeping about people uh, toward the people and uh, you are all models. So those are very, very um, uh, inter uh, important things to other entrepreneurs like us uh, to be um, encouraging. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Engineer Danica Pereira. So, uh, and uh, I hope uh, uh, you are uh, this session and uh, enthusiastic for other entrepreneurs. And uh, so all of other entrepreneurs, so we will share this uh, session, recorded session uh, within a very soon on our Facebook page. Uh, so you can join our entrepreneur, engineering entrepreneurship Facebook page, which is on your, uh, in the chat. So join us uh, and be a member of that Facebook page. So you, you will get updates of the every session and things like that. So, um, so let's wind up the session today. And thank you very much, Danika. Thank you very much, uh, all the participants. And uh, so having this uh, session worth for everyone. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you Danika and Prasan, uh, engineer. Engineer Danika, thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks. Thank you, Prasan.